More than 300 years ago, William Penn planned for his beloved city of Philadelphia to be a green country town, recommending that there be ample room for gardens, orchards, and fields to make the city wholesome and beautiful. The historic city was the first in the country to deliver clean drinking water to its citizens using state-of-the-art water treatment, and in 1855 had the foresight to begin purchasing land along the Schuylkill River to help protect the city's drinking water supply. Today, the city is embracing green techniques to infiltrate, capture, and treat stormwater on site. These techniques replicate the natural hydrologic cycle and are a forward-thinking solution to the age-old problem of runoff. Instead of using pipes and tunnels, the goal is to slow the water down, spread it out, and soak it in using innovative solutions. Water is extremely valuable until it hits the stormwater inlet. Then it becomes a waste product. Instead of taking that rainwater, which is perfectly good water, and, and having it go into our sewer system, we can uh, infiltrate that, that water into the, into the ground, thereby helping the groundwater, helping our rivers and streams, helping the ecology, and saving us some money and energy in managing and treating what rainwater then becomes a waste product in our sewer system. Green techniques beautify and cool cities, minimize flooding, and reduce the need for costly pipes and tunnels to manage stormwater. Philadelphia's Onion Flats LLC is synonymous with building and community sustainability. Through their Development Design Build Collective, they are able to design buildings with the highest ratings for energy and water efficiency, while meeting the bottom line. The city now offers incentives to builders and developers to meet clean water and other environmental goals. But Onion Flats was an early innovator who has led the way by example. When you're talking about design, especially sustainable design, it's important to have everybody at the table at the same time, right from the very start. So from the conception to the end of the project. Normally, most projects are done with engineers, builders, developers in different rooms at different times, all wanting the same thing, but ending up in such different kind of parts of the project and with different kind of ideas, you don't have the integrative approach. We've always made it be very, very important that we're all aligned from the very, very start. And it makes it easy when we're all the same people. For us, designing buildings, developing buildings, isn't about being green, it's about a common sense approach to design and development, to building practices. Our, our primary focus is to design buildings that are models of sustainability to show that it need not cost any more to build green. The cost of building sustainably is no more, ultimately, than building a standard code house. In this example, for instance, thin flats, the houses are selling in a market that's not selling at market value which is unheard of right now. In 2009, Onion Flats completed the Thin Flats development. Located in the Northern Liberties neighborhood of Philadelphia, Thin Flats is the first LEED certified platinum duplex in the United States. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design and is an internationally recognized green building certification standard. Thin Flats promotes low-impact lifestyles that support the city's mandate to protect water quality. They consist of eight units that are duplexes stacked on top of each other, one at the lower level with two floors and one at the top level. Consists of people of all the different types, um, sizes, shapes, and colors. And it is uh, mostly people that are interested in lowering their utility bills by 60% or more. People that want to live in a healthy environment with lots of light and lots of fresh air. The roof on each upper level duplex not only provides an outdoor livable space, but also captures and treats stormwater. 
These green roofs hold a layer of growing medium, where plants such as sedum, ornamental grasses, and even sunflowers grow and help capture stormwater runoff. Without the green roof, the runoff would go directly into the city's sewer system. On the green roof, as you can see, these pavers have spaces between them, allowing that water to also recharge within the green roof system. The green roof is actually purifying the water that's going into first the green roof and then bypass to beyond. In our project at Thin Flats, we actually capture that water in a rainwater harvesting tank. The green roof has tremendous value in terms of ongoing maintenance of a, of a roof. There is a physical roof membrane like any other roof, but that membrane now is not exposed to the sun, so it's not subjected to the UV degradation. The roof will last two to three times longer than if it were exposed. The green roof is great because it's, a, it's an oasis. You know, you can get away from the city and what's down below and you're, you're, you're covered by, you know, fauna and flowers and plants and you can entertain up here. Um, it's got, you know, walkways that you can put your grill on and you can have people up here. And it's, it's spectacular. You have a view of the city. Stormwater runoff from Thin Flats, green roofs and porches travels through downspouts and is delivered to rainwater harvesting tanks or cisterns. These cisterns are located under the rear parking area and can store several thousand gallons. The water can then be used for car washing and irrigation, among other uses, through the numerous hydrants that are located on the property. Water conservation practices were also incorporated into the interiors of thin flats. As part of our attention to water conservation, uh, when you look at the bathrooms, when you look at low flow fixtures, low flow faucets, dual flush toilets, again, it's all about water conservation. When you're talking about a sustainable approach and a maintenance on a sustainable building, if it's thought out well, and we like to believe that we think things through, then the maintenance should be no more intensive than any standard building, and in a lot of cases, a lot less intensive. Being an Energy Star partner is part of Onion Flats' sustainable approach. To date, they have built 11 homes that are Energy Star certified, including Thin Flats. By choosing Energy Star, homeowners and businesses can save money on their utility bills. According to 2008 estimates, the Energy Star program saved Americans $18 billion on utility bills. The benefit of being an Energy Star partner for Onion Flats is that we're putting the best appliances into the homes with the best efficiency. And new home buyers are taking into consideration sustainability and green techniques when selecting a new home. I lived at Thin Flats since March 1st, 2009. A lot of detail and thought went into it. So that, that drew me immediately because I knew there was a purpose for everything. And it was, it was done very intelligently. This has been considered the five minute community, which means you can get anywhere five minutes and I'm driving a whole lot less. Um, I have public transportation here, so I'm not using my car anywhere near as much as I would. There's, there's stores and restaurants, and, and you're living in something that's very green and sustainable, something that's saving energy, and something that looks aesthetically just, just incredible. It's just an incredible place to live. The application of green techniques to control stormwater is gaining in popularity across the country. In the vast majority of cases, the U.S. EPA has found that implementing well-chosen green techniques can save money for developers, owners, and communities, along with helping to protect and restore water quality, reduce energy consumption, and improve the quality of life. We like to consider the 3P approach, people, planet, and profit. If you don't consider people and their needs, it's not gonna work. If you don't consider the, profit, the, the planet, it's not going to work because, especially in this environment, it's very, very important to look at our environment as something that we've been given one of and create it as something that we're responsible for. And then profit. If you can't make it feasible for someone to make a profit out of it or to earn an income from it, it's not going to be sustainable. We need to think as a society, how responsible do I need to be when I design and build a property to everyone else? And my answer to that is 
extremely responsible.